One of the other projects we have going on right now with our control strategies course is a cascade control temperature on a small oven, a convection oven. We're using a Siemens 353 to serve as both a primary and secondary, that's master and slave, in a cascade control strategy. This particular Siemens controller is hooked up through Ethernet. We're using Procidia eyewear software to take a look at both controllers so we can see both uh, faceplates, virtual faceplates here. For the primary, our master, and the secondary, our slave. As I mentioned, this is on a small electric convection oven. So what we're doing with our uh, sorry, master and slave, the slave is measuring air temperature and the master is measuring the temperature of the food. We have two thermocouples, one stuck into the food and the other one just measuring air temp. So the output of our master food temp controller is turning into the set point of the slave air temp controller. And we can look at them both here. And you can, uh, you can see how that's working. The output right here is saturated. It's calling for max air temp. And we are limited right there to a set point of 400 degrees. So we cannot call for more than 400 degrees oven temperature. That prevents the heating element from burning out. You can see here in this case, the slave controller is throttling back on the power. It's not sending full power to the element because we are actually holding at that limited set point of 400 degrees. It's one of the uh, distinct advantages of doing cascade control of temperature. You can put in safe set point limits, so we cannot call for a temperature that would be unsafe for the process. So right now it's heating up as fast as we're letting it heat up. It's hit our limit, and it's going to take its time getting up to the food temperature we want, which in this case is 160 degrees, which is the proper burrito temperature, scientifically determined. <laughs>